Good morning, at least it's morning right now, and welcome to my video tutorial on how to use Aegisub. Uh, I'll be telling you basically everything I know about how to use the program, which I'll admit is not everything. I'm not an expert, but I did want to uh, get what information I do have out there so that people can be more involved with the process, and uh, hopefully this means more fan subs. So let's get started with Aegis Sub now. Um, first and foremost, you need to know a little bit about how Aegis Sub works. Uh, what it does is it opens the video file and it also opens a separate subtitle file. This is called an ASS file. I'll give you a few seconds to laugh about that. Um, the ASS file is just the subtitles and their special effects. It does not contain the video itself. So it's really, you're working with two different types of files here. So let's start Aegis Sub and let's uh, get used to the interface. Now this is what you see when you first open it. This is a blank slate. This is sort of like if you open Microsoft Word and you don't see anything because you haven't really typed anything yet. Um, but it wouldn't really do you much good for me to explain what you're looking at right now because this isn't really what it's going to look like once you've got the video open. Um, so let's do that. Now up here we of course have the menu and the toolbar as with any good program. Now there are two ways to open a video file. There is the drag and drop method and there is also this. You can go up here to the video menu, not file like you would think, but video, and you go to open video. Now this brings up the standard file browser and let's open Space Sheriff Gavon 01. Uh, so now that the video is open, this is a little more like it. This is uh, what you're going to be seeing as you work with Aegisub. Uh, now, there are three main window panes right now. This right here is the video box. Uh, pretty easy to figure out. It, it shows the video itself. Down here we have the playback controls. We also have the current uh, time frame. And uh, over here we have a few buttons. These are for type settings, so we're not going to worry about them just yet. Down here is the subtitle grid. This shows you line by line every subtitle in your script. Now right now you can see there's just the one line and it's blank. Uh, this is because we haven't done anything yet. Now what you can do with this uh, subtitle grid, you select the individual lines for editing. Okay well that's great but how do you edit them? Well, that's you edit them up here in the edit box. Now you can see there's a linking cursor right now that shows you that this is a text field where you can type anything you want. Now you'll notice that the text is not showing up down here. And the reason for that is because we have not committed the change. This is a very important concept when you're working with Aegisub. It's not a what you see is what you get program like MS Word. Uh, anytime you make a change in the edit box, you have to commit it or it will be lost. Uh, you can do that a number of ways. Uh, there's this big commit button up here. You can also press enter or uh, you can also hold control and press enter and I'll, I'll be getting to the difference between those two in a later video. So let's commit this change and you can see not only uh, has the line showed up here on line one, but if you highlight it, it'll go to that point in the video where that subtitle displays and it even displays it for you. Now up here in the edit box you'll notice there's a bunch of controls. These are for typesetting and timing, mostly. And they're very uh, important, but I'm not going to explain all of them right now. Uh, what I will explain, however, there's another uh, box that's very important that you'll need to be working with, um, but it's not showing up yet because we haven't opened it. Uh, the third file type that Aegisub works with is audio. 
Now the audio is part of the video, so you don't need to open a separate audio file or anything. What you do, you go up here to audio in the menu, and rather than open audio file, you click on open audio from video. Uh, now what this does is it just it reads all the audio that's in the video and it sort of caches it for you so that you can look at it and uh, this always takes a while but it is important to do so I'm just going to let the status bar finish loading and it's a bit slow I'm not going to sing a song or anything I'm not that evil and here we go now this is the audio box right here uh, there is a bunch of controls these are all for timing right here uh, and this display right here this is a waveform display if you've ever worked with an audio editing program you're already used to that uh, but this is not we're not going to be actually editing the audio it's just used so that you can visually see it um, it also shows you the start and end of the subtitle the start is the red bar on the left and the end is the orange bar right here now again anytime you make a change here you have to commit it there's an auto commit button which I'm hovering my mouse over right now uh, but that's that is a very important thing to do in Aegisub you always 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 have to commit your changes I've lost some very good typesetting that way don't let it happen to you so okay we've got uh, ourselves a subtitle down here which means technically this is a script there's nothing in good in it this you know I'm not working with an actual translation here but if I were to save this and encode it it would show up with the video so um how do we save this file well it's pretty simple this is what the file menu is for the file menu is for working with the ASS file that's why when you open the video and the audio you have to go to their separate menus so you've got the standard save subtitles and save subtitles as you've also got the standard button on the toolbar and there's also control S so let's save these as Gavon episode one dot ASS if you're still giggling about that that's okay I was too and then you save now once you exit uh, and reopen the program you're going to have sort of a blank slate again like this so to save time you can open the subtitles again now I saved it as Gavon episode 1 open now when you open the subtitle file it's always going to pop up this dialog box at you do you want to load or unload the associated files now what this is talking about is it's talking about the video file you were using um, so obviously you want to click yes to that so that it will automatically load up the video and in this case since I was working with the audio it's also going to read the audio back into RAM again uh, just to save time on all that now let's say you just got the script from someone else let's say you're the typesetter and the timer just sent you the timed script um, when you open the script it's going to pop up that dialog box at you but if you say yes it's probably not going to work and the reason for that is because uh, the file is probably in a completely different location so you're gonna wanna click no at first then you wanna save it after you've got the video and the audio open and that'll save the new locations so that anytime you open the script after that it'll just uh, you'll, you'll be able to open them automatically with that dialog box um, and that's pretty much the basics uh, so I hope you learned something valuable here and I'll see you in the next video which will be all about timing <laughs>